welcome back to M&A uh, TV. Uh, we're delighted this afternoon to have Selena Sagayam from the global law firm Gibson, Dunn and Crutcher with us. Um, thank you very much for joining us. Um, shareholder of activism, there seems almost to be a scare campaign. It's, it's about to break over these shores from the United States and terrible things are going to happen. Um, it's not that bad, is it? Why should we be bothered? Have we anything to fear? No, I, I don't think there's anything to fear. Um, I think the perception in the UK, at least, is uh, much more open to activist action and shareholder activism. And we've seen lots of examples of that going on for a number of years. The, there has been a, a change in terms of regarding activists as the locusts and a recognition that in many cases they can actually add value. Um, they offer sort of, uh, you know, added value in terms of board representation. Sometimes they ask the right questions, difficult questions, which perhaps other shareholders would like answered as well. Right. So we should welcome them then. By and large, we should be prepared to engage with them. I think you know, that um, as an advisor and often advising companies um, facing possible shareholder activism, my first advice would be to, to try to engage with the activists rather than um, just saying no and putting the shutters up. Right. OK, fair enough. Um, how come we haven't had so much of a development of the shareholder activism um, activity here uh, and yet they have the United States? There are, um, I think, that there has been a, a number of sort of activist situations, but in the UK in particular and even in Europe, a lot of it has occurred behind the scenes, partly for, um, and in fact principally for cultural reasons. Um, boards have been much more receptive to shareholder um, engagement in private dialogue and so often the engagement is actually never reported on and we, and we don't see sort of the, the statistics which, which bear out engagement which is actually going on behind the scenes. In addition I think you do have a, a, um, a slightly more sort of, uh, it's a different shareholder base um, in, in the US one which um, is much more sort of familiar and comfortable, engaging and often in aggressive ways with boards, taking sort of litigation action if necessary in the context of trying to affect change, um, and 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 also facing um, boards which have unacceptable, say, st structural uh, setups. For example, poison pills, and actually you know, are trying to affect sort of real and positive change. Mm. So all in all then, is there much to fear and maybe they won't be the force, the activists, they won't be the force here because various cultural differences uh, that they are in the uh, United States? I think in terms of, of numbers of activist campaigns, we're, we're not seeing as, as much activity, certainly, um, as in the U.S. In relative terms, in the U.K., we, it, it's, a much, it's much more open to shareholder activism. We are seeing more examples of activist action than, say, sort of France, Germany, Italy. Um, will there be a huge increase going forward? I think, as I said, we are already seeing signs of that increase. Um, and, I mean, one, one of the key trends as well, which will impact that change is uh, we're seeing lots of U.S. hedge funds and activist funds actually setting up shop here in the U.K. and Europe. They are um, identifying more European companies as possible targets for activist action, uh, companies where there is value to be unlocked um, and where, where potentially the landscape has changed, um, including both sort of culturally and from a regulatory standpoint to um, make it much more open to activist action. So we, we had better just watch and see what happens. Watch and see what happens, but actually prepare in advance would, would be my recommendation. Sounds like good advice. Selina Sangayam, thank you very much for joining me this afternoon. Thank you.